I know I've been gone for a bit, but let's ignore that. Interceptors. You know, those funny little machines that people made to go into tornadoes. And not die. If you don't know anything about tornado interceptors, I'll go ahead and briefly explain. So, in 1998, a funny guy by the name of Steve Green made the first ever tornado interceptor, known as Tornado Attack. In 2003, an even funnier guy named Sean Casey made the second, known as the Tornado Intercept Vehicle, TIV, or my personal favorite, the Coffin on Wheels. He did that for his IMAX film, Tornado Alley. Ever since those two, there have been many other intercept vehicles, including the three Dominators by Reed Timmer, another TIV, Utah, Tornado Puncher, Dorothy, Armadillo, oh, and the sub-interceptor vehicles like Titus, Subinator, okay, you get it. But why? Science, and the thrill of being in a tornado. So, how do you make a strong interceptor? So you've decided to live out the true American dream of building a homemade tank to drive into tornadoes. Well, let's start at the vehicle. What you'll want is a pretty modern truck with a high weight limit, probably at least 12,000 pounds. That means don't use an SUV. Then, take your precious new truck and strip everything off of it besides the engine and chassis stuff. You can leave some of the body on it, but that just limits your freedom with the shape of the interceptor and the armor quality overall. I wonder who did that three different times. Anyways, now you have a bare truck. Now it's time to build a frame and come up with a shape. Ideally, you want a pretty angled design that allows wind to freely move over the vehicle in all directions. This means don't ignore the sides. Most, if not all, current interceptors can easily be rolled because of how flat the sides are. Remember though, you cannot make the vehicle wider than 8 feet 5 inches if you want it to be street legal. Now that you have a blueprint, or at least hopefully a vision, you can begin to make the frame for it. Make it out of 2 inch tubular steel or at least use that material as much as you can. Don't make the vehicle out of little one inch thick metal rods. Here are a couple examples of pretty good, strong frames. And here are a couple not so good frames. You see the difference? Good. Now that you have your frame, make the armor. I'd recommend starting by using eighth inch steel around the entire body. It's strong, not too heavy, and also hopefully not too expensive. Then, around the parts of the armor where there's going to be important stuff, like, you know, the people inside of the vehicle, add an inch or two thick of composite armor. Composite armor is basically just fusing a few smaller layers of different materials together to make even stronger armor. You don't need to do that if you want to have a 2x4 fly through the body. <laughs> You can also pick and choose what materials to use and how much of it in the composite armor, but that's a bit complicated. As far as windows go, I'd say 1 to 2 inch thick polycarbonate or something similar will hold up nicely. Up until now, I've basically been describing TIV 2, but there's something about it, a main design feature that I heavily dislike, flaps. They make it so you can get rolled easier undeployed because you're way higher off the ground, they take forever to lower down, and they give your sides way more flat surface area. I heavily advise you to instead have a rubber layer near the bottom and just have the entire body drop down. A main design feature of all interceptors is some way to prevent the wind from getting under them, so if you have to have flaps, you can do that. The most important part of your vehicle is going to be spikes. Without them, no interceptor could even make it close to 200 miles per hour. I'd recommend at least four and angle them, as making them go straight down into the ground, first off, will raise your vehicle up, and secondly, make it way easier for the tornado to pull you up. When you angle the spikes, it allows them to more easily go through the ground and also prevents you from being pulled upward. 
It's also important to have the spikes be long. I'd say anywhere over 10 inches for the bare minimum, but probably avoid going over 45 to 50 as that won't be as efficient. That's pretty much it. Try to not do something that will make the vehicle no longer street legal. So with all of that out of the way, at least in my opinion, what is the current best interceptor. Right now, I'd say probably TIV2. However, there is a lot of room for improvement, and if I'm being honest, I think I've made one of the most strong, efficient, and actually achievable fictional designs there is. So in my completely unbiased opinion, behold, the Raptor. This is my own interceptor that I designed top to bottom, known as Raptor. That stands for Research and Photography of Tornadoes. It's built off of a 4th gen Ram 4500, and the weight is, hopefully, going to be in the ballpark of 12 to 15,000 pounds. The general design follows every rule that I listed previously, having a body made out of 8th inch steel, and having 1 and 3 quarter inch composite armor in the midsection and back, where, you know, the people will be, at least 2 inch thick polycarbonate windows, 8 total spikes, with the front ones being 32 inches long, and the rest being 40. As far as my attachments on the outside, I have an anemometer, a cell booster, a 360 degree camera, four different GoPros, all of my various logos that I made, the gas cap, the license plate. Moving inside the vehicle, you'll see three seats, a mirrorless camera on the dash, an essential JBL speaker, a laptop, one singular cup holder, a mini frame of the vehicle on the dash, and a display of what the backup camera sees, since there's no rear view mirror. Overall, this vehicle should conform to every road law, making it perfectly street legal and pretty fast to deploy. It also has a pretty good ride height and a rubber layer at the bottom, so it can easily go up hills and dirt roads despite having such a long shape. I'm not going to assign a threshold to it since nobody knows what any interceptor can survive, but I'd put it ahead of TIV 2. This thing was made entirely in Blender and is 100% proportional to how it would look in real life, meaning this design, technically, is completely possible if I ever get enough funding and someone willing to build it because I can't weld. And although this vehicle isn't in any games yet, it will hopefully be coming soon to the streets of Holicity. Sorry again for taking such a long break, but I will be back soon enough with a really big video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and bye.